Okay. In this lecture, we will be looking at uh, series expansion of Green's function. So, if there exists homogeneous, if there exist solutions to the homogeneous differential equation, then we can construct the Green's function. using techniques of lectures 1 to 3 else we need to revert to other possible techniques so one such technique is to expand or write the Green's function as a linear combination or also what we call as a series linear combination of uh, suitable basis functions basis functions means basically orthogonal functions with the unit norm okay so let's look at uh, again the example of a stretch string with static deflections okay let us look at uh, static deflections of a stretch string tied between two ends so we chose the two ends as uh, x equal to 0 and x equal to l so if you remember this was the second problem that we solved in lecture 2 so where uh, the equation of motion is basically d squared u of x actually it was tension times d squared u by dx squared equal to some f of x which we wrote it as d squared u of x by d of x dx squared equal to some small f of x by t which is which we written as capital f of x and u has to satisfy the condition that u at x equal to 0 should be 0 and u at x equal to l should be 0 because it's tied so therefore the displacement will be 0 at these two ends so if you need to solve this uh, for getting the constructing the Green's function that means the Green's function should satisfy d squared g of x comma psi by dx squared equal to delta of x minus xi and g at x equal to 0 xi should be equal to g at x equal to l xi should be 0. These are the boundary conditions which are satisfied. So, if the homogeneous equation has solution, in this case it has and we know how to get the answer. But assuming that if it doesn't happen, then what is the other alternative to obtain the Green's function? So the idea is uh, to understand what should be the ideal choice. So if you see here, this is the kind of scenario we have, right? That's your x and this is your displacement u. And the string is tied between x equal to 0 and say some point x equal to l, right? So basically at two endpoints of the interval the uh, you know function g of x uh, xi should go to zero so that means it's uh, something like you know our 1d infinite well problem in quantum mechanics where the displacement obviously has to be between these two points only and at the two ends it is zero so one of the ideal uh, basis for such a situation is the fourier sign basis is the Fourier 
sin basis. So that is basically a root 2 by L, which is a normalization factor times sin of n pi x upon L. So let us look at uh, writing our g of x comma xi as a linear combination of these four year sign series. So g of x comma xi can be written as summation n equal to 1 to infinity gamma n times root 2 by L sin n pi x upon L. So this xi we will try to bring it into the expansion coefficients. So the expansion coefficients will be functions of xi. So the idea is to determine this gamma n of psi. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to substitute this g of x comma psi into this equation. So on one side we will be having in terms of sine. So we need to write this delta function also as a linear combination of the same uh, expansion. So if you were to write delta of x minus psi as summation n equal to 1 to infinity. Let us say some delta n of psi which are the coefficients multiplying root 2 by L sin n by x upon L. So we need to find this delta n of psi. How do we do that? So we know from Fourier series how to obtain this coefficient. So what we do is we multiply by root 2 by L sin let us say some m by x by L uh, into delta of x minus xi and then integrate between the limits 0 to L dx. This will be equal to summation n equal to 1 to infinity delta n of xi and the integration actually between 0 to L will go inside because it is a linear operator. So integral 0 to L uh, you will have already 1 root 2 by L uh, sin n pi x by L and another root 2 by L sin n pi x by L. So I can write it as 2 by L sin n pi x upon L into sin n pi x upon L dx. So you see here because the uh, root 2 by L sin this is the Fourier sin basis. So this integral here along with this factor will be delta n n. That means this particular summation will survive only when n is equal to n that will give us delta m of xi. So we obtained delta m of xi as this and uh, so one can now look at uh, g of x comma xi is uh, summation n equal to 1 to infinity gamma n of xi root 2 by l sin x. So we have to substitute this g of x comma xi into this equation. So if you differentiate uh, once you will get um, dg by dx will give you summation n equal to 1 to infinity gamma n of psi and differentiate uh, sin n pi x by l will get m pi by l times root 2 by l cos n pi x of l and uh, then d squared g by dx squared the one more differentiation will give us summation n equal to 1 to infinity gamma n of psi. So you will get no cos will give you minus sign. So therefore minus n squared pi squared upon l squared times root 2 by l sin n pi x upon l. So this is d squared g by dx squared and this should be equated to basically this delta of x minus xi which is um, uh, delta of x minus xi will be now summation n equal to 0 to n equal to 1 to infinity right n equal to 1 1 to infinity because n equal to 0 will go into the Fourier cosine series n equal to 1 to infinity yeah this one that is this integral here. This integral here because it is 0 to L delta of x minus xi will only survive for x equal to xi. So that should have given us root 2 by L sin m pi xi upon L. So this is the value of delta m. So delta n will be root 2 upon L sin n pi 
z upon l. That will be your delta n of psi. Now tell sin n pi x upon l. So these two are the same basis functions. Therefore, this should be equal to the coefficients should be equal. So that is how we determine gamma n of psi. So gamma n of psi times minus n squared pi squared upon l squared should be equal to root 2 upon l sin n pi xi upon l and so v xi upon l and so we got our expression for gamma n of xi so gamma n of xi will be equal to minus l squared upon n squared pi squared into root 2 by L sin n pi xi upon L which means we obtained our Green's function. So the Green's function g of x comma xi which was a summation n equal to 1 to infinity gamma n of xi. So gamma n squared by squared times root 2 by L sin n pi xi by L that is the gamma n of xi into the basis function that is root 2 by l sin n pi x upon l. So that is the Green's function definition as a series expansion in terms of Fourier sine series. So if you remember the previous derivation, y less than x is the integral. So obviously these two are not looking the same. That's because we have to expand this x and this l minus x in terms of the Fourier sine series. And then we can see that they both will be equal. So that is left as a homework for you.